my cylinder head has come back from the machine shop where it was bead blasted clean and um, I'm beginning the process of reassembling it now. The factory manual recommends that if you replace the valves in this cylinder head, they should be lapped in. That's what I'll be doing. If I was uh, installing titanium valves, then no, I would not. Uh, but when all else fails, go with what the factory manual says is my rule. I've done 16 of my 20 valves, and after doing 16 valves, I have definitely learned what works and what doesn't. So let me walk through the steps that I've been using. I'm no expert, but I've definitely learned a few things that I want to pass on about hand lapping valves. First is, I definitely recommend taking your head and get get your valve seats cut by a CNC machine. Um, you know, if it's a couple hundred bucks to do that, your time is going to be probably worth more than that. And I'm investing anywhere between a half an hour and an hour on every single one of these valves, at least. So, uh, but here's the procedure I've been walking through and it's working pretty good. Um, I take the new valve, because I'm installing all new valves, first thing I do is I clean it off, because it comes shipped with a little bit of anti-corrosion compound on it. Once I have the valve cleaned off, and you can see that's what is on it to start with, I've been using some blue dye chem uh, to coat the valve. The outer surface is where it comes into contact with the valve seat. I'm going to bed this one in and lap it into this central intake port. So I coat that with die chem. I let that dry. Uh, and then I have a combination of lapping compounds. Now what I'm finding is working well is I start with 500 grit. My valve seats are in pretty good shape. If your valve seats are shot, again, go get them machined. You can lap for the rest of your life and you won't be able to fix the, uh, the heavy damage in a, in a highly uh, corroded valve seat. Uh, I'm starting with 500 grit and then I use that to gauge whether I need to go to a more coarse grit or whether I can stay at 500 or even go higher. Uh, that gives me kind of a baseline of what am I looking at. The other thing is you cannot rely on the naked eye. Uh, I can look at this valve seat with my eye and it looks fantastic. When I look at uh, the valve seat under magnification, I see something entirely different. I'm using a little 10 power jeweler's loop, but you can, you know, you use anything you have, a magnifying glass or a workbench illuminated magnifying uh, lens. With this jeweler's loop, I can see every tiny little defect. And it gives me a completely different perspective. Throughout this process, I'm going to be inserting this valve and removing it cleaning it, putting on different compounds. Something I have definitely been careful about is when I insert this valve into its valve guide, if I feel any grittiness or any resistance to that valve sliding down in the guide, I immediately pull it out. I don't force it down in the valve guide. I pop it out. I squirt the valve guide with some contact cleaner to clean it out. And I squirt the valve stem to clean it. You don't want any grit or any of this lapping compound to make its way down into the valve guide. So keep that thing clean and you'll know. Because as soon as you insert it, you'll feel a little grittiness or the valve guide just won't slide right down. Don't force it. Don't push it down there. Alright, so for my first cut into the valve seat to see where I'm at, I start with 500 grit lapping compound. I apply it to the outside edge of the valve. Don't go overboard. You don't need a ton. That right there is plenty. I don't contaminate the valve stem. And I let that valve stem drop right down. Now, this is the most important thing I've learned in this whole process. And that is, in order to cut this seat, you could spin this valve around with a drill or with a lapping tool a bunch of times in a row, around and around and around. I don't recommend doing that. What I found is that silicon carbide grit that's in this lapping compound, as you start to turn this, that grit will sort of make its way up and make its way down outside that contact surface. If you spin this thing around and around, what seems to happen is some of that grit gets trapped into the same channel 
and it cuts a nice groove all the way around this seat. If you lap this thing back and forth, and I'll do it from underneath here, what I found is if you go back and forth like this, and you can even do a few turns in one direction, a few turns in the other direction, that compound makes its way up and down. And then after a few turns, lift it up, spin it around a little bit, drop it back down and do it again. And that has a way of getting that compound back right into the center of that, that contact surface. Also when you do this, you'll hear a change. It'll sound very scratchy, because that's what's happening, is it's that grit scratching the surface. And as that silicon carbide particles move up and down, you'll, you'll hear it get smoother and smoother. As soon as I hear it smoothing out, I pick it up, move it around, and start again. And for the first cut, I'll do this, I don't know, maybe for a couple of minutes, two, three minutes back and forth. At which point, I will then pull my guide out, remove it, and now I'll clean the compound off the valve and off the valve seat. And with that die cam, I'll now be able to, let me get a clean towel, with no parts cleaner on it. If it has parts cleaner on it, it'll take that die cam right off. And I want that ink to stay on there. I just do a quick clean up. And now, I can look at the valve seat, and I can clearly see where there's ink sitting on that contact surface, both with the naked eye, and even better, under magnification. With this, you can actually see the craters and other imperfections all along that contact surface. And what I'll be doing is, periodically while lapping, I'll come back and reinspect. Am I cutting that seat down? Are those imperfections getting scraped away? And uh, do I need to go to a more coarse grid, or is it time to go ahead and move up to a, a finer green uh, compound? And Again, you really need to see this under magnification to appreciate it. I'm hoping I can get some high-res pictures that I can then intersperse here and, and show you what this looks like. All right, so now under my magnifier, you can better see what this valve head looks like once it's been lapped for a little bit. Where you've got that die cam on either side of the area that was actually in contact. And what you're looking for here is that nice, even, width, dull gray without any blue dye cutting across that blue surface. If this surface was pitted, there'd be low spots and there'd still be some blue dye in there. So we want to see that nice, even gray, just like that. Now this is a brand new valve, so this is exactly what I would expect. And here's the valve seat. So under magnification, you can see the blue dots that go all the way around this valve seat surface. Those are the low spots, and that's going to require more lapping. I hit that valve seat with 240 grit and I'm now satisfied that I've gotten most of the defects out of it. It's now rough. I'm going to I'm going to go up to the 500 grit. First thing I'm going to do is completely clean off this valve. I don't want any remnant of that 240 grit on this thing. I've also already cleaned up the seat and reapplied some die chem so that I can now go to my 500 grit and I'll probably spend about I don't know 5 or 10 minutes working on this same process just going to hit it back and forth I'll start out with pretty high pressure on this thing work it in good and then do that for a minute or so then back it off a little tiny bit Go easy, medium pressure. Same routine. Bring it out, clean it off, take a look at the ink stains across the valve seat. Keep working this until I'm satisfied I've gotten the seat about as good as I can practically get it. Then I'll finish it off with some 800 grit. I'll clean everything off again, uh, clean the valve, put the 800 grit on there, work that for a few minutes, you know, five minutes or so to get a 800 grit even surface across the whole thing. When it's all said and done, it's not going to be a mirror finish. 800 grit isn't even close to a mirror finish, but that's not really what you need.